Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Creepy Crawly. Today I'm really excited about our episode. As I mentioned in the previous one, I'm going to do a review of my 1982 Alfa Romeo GTV6. So I ended up purchasing the vehicle in the end of September or early October 2016 and it went directly to my friends uh, in Randfontein in South Africa. Um, old Basi is the owner and his son, stepson Calvin, they, you know, they did the restoration for me. My mechanic was, was uh, Trevor Pierce from Raceco. And between them, they did the mechanical restoration as well as the, you know, the body, the cosmetic restoration. The restoration itself only took about four months. It was quite a, I, I really pushed them. I wanted the car before Christmas, but eventually I got the car just before Valentine's Day. And I was extremely excited to have the car back. Um, I then, you know, the first adventure was then to take the wife uh, out for dinner. I think we went to a hard rock cafe or something, and then on the way, you know, the gearbox actually broke. So then all these teething problems started to surface. Um, so for the past three years, you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I, I really want the car to drive like a brand new car. And I think I actually, I'm, I'm actually now at a point where everything is 100% sorted. And I also realized that all the parts that we did not replace, you know, because the car is now finished and the car is now working, all those old parts started to act out. Uh, it was, and it was always sort of passive. You always drove the car and waited for something to break. And eventually I started to realize that you need to be proactive. We, for instance, changed the fuel pump before it even, you know, the fuel pump could have lasted another 5,000 Ks or something. But we thought, no, let's rather be proactive this time. Because at some point in the beginning, the car did have more low bed mileage than it's, you know, on a normal tar road. So yeah, it was, it was getting a bit annoying. I was, uh, at some point, I actually saw the tow truck driver. I had a, I had a better relationship with the tow truck driver than my wife. Um, so um, that was, you know, in the beginning with these classic cars, you do, you do think the only way to get rid of those teething problems is by, by driving the car. So that's, in a nutshell, Basically, you know, the history of this particular GDV6. I will now go and open the car and show you inside and out so you can have a, have a better look and a better feel for the car. And then the wife and myself, we were probably, we're probably going to go out and go for a nice drive and enjoy a nice dinner. And uh, you guys are definitely going to come with. So let's, let's go do that. So, guys, as I mentioned, the car was originally uh, sapphire blue, but you know, my personal preference, especially with these GTVs, I just feel they, they're sort of the best in, you know, this red or white or gunmetal. Um, so, because you cannot see the color on the, on the registration papers, um, I phoned the panel beat and asked him, let's, let's, let's just go for gold and let's just, you know, make it red. Because I believe that's the, you know, it's really the best color for the car and he totally agreed. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what we did. So just to talk about the number, you'll see here, this is number 7 of 100. So these cars were launched in Geneva in 1981. And apparently the plant here at Roslyn, close to Pretoria in South Africa, they, they weren't ready to, you know, to produce these vehicles. So what happened was the first, the first 100 vehicles were imported from Italy. But now it seems that the cars weren't complete. It looks like in all the mechanical parts, like the engine and the gearbox and so forth, it was you know, part of the body plus the suspension. But then as you'll see, it seems that they fitted the windows in South Africa because it has South African glass. Um, and then the, the, you know, the ball street was also uh, from South Africa. So let me just walk around the car. Well, apparently this ball street is unique to the South African cars um, but you don't, you don't get it for the overseas vehicles and then it also had you know these GDV6s overseas all of them had the straight dash but this one's got the got the split dash um, so this was uh, this was basically then the seventh car of uh, you know of the production line uh, when I bought the vehicle the car had 73,400 original case I'm, I'm only the third owner and it's now you know, got about 81,700. So I've, I've put on about 9,000 Ks or 8,000 8, Ks since I've, since I've had the car. You also see it still has the original 
uh, what is it, the uh, national radio, and it it was it was actually quite technologically advanced because it had these preset stations. So now it's quite nice, you know. I've uh, saved all the radio stations that I like, and now you don't have to struggle. So it was great technology, even in those days. <laughs> Uh, what I, the reason I also opted to have a GDV6 was that I definitely wanted to have air conditioning as well as fuel injection. I just want to open the bonnet here um, so I can sh show you guys the, uh, the engine bay. So as, as you can see, you know, everything is basically plated. It's still got the starter cover. It's got a brand new air conditioning system. The orig original unit um, used to be, um, I think, a two piston unit, but wasn't, you know, they weren't very effective. But now the new system has got the five piston rotary. And um, as, you'll, as you'll see later on when we go for a drive, they, you know, it's, it's quite potent. The car eventually starts to get really cool. So that's quite, quite nice to have that modern feature. Uh, this engine here yeah, is it's not the normal 2.5 it's actually 2.8 when we when we overhauled the engine when when trevor opened the engine he realized the car had three liter pistons in it that was quite a popular um, conversion back in the day so we either had to get another engine which meant you had to change the engine number or we could just continue with a 2.8 conversion and that's that's what we did and i must say the car's actually better off for that it just has a little bit of extra grunt you know that it really needs especially if you're traveling with people in the car plus the air conditioning plus you're running that so i took the car i took the car for a dyno the other day and I, if i remember correctly it was something like 95 or 100 kilowatts on the wheels on the rear wheels and i mean we are in johannesburg we are, we're up here at about 1600 meters above sea level so i wouldn't say for a car from 1982 that that's but that's not bad. I, I believe that's actually quite good, uh, good stats. Um, for the real GTV enthusiasts out there, uh, you know, don't, don't kill me because I don't have this cover. A cover. I do actually have the cover. It just keeps on falling off. So I'm, you know, I put it. Uh, I'm keeping it there below the, uh, below the cover hold. So let me just show you the rear of the car. Yeah, well, the boot. The boot is a bit stiff. I put in a new uh, strut the other day. I think it was, it's a little bit, it's pumped a little bit stronger than it's supposed to be. And here we have what I call the Salvation Army. Any, any person that owns a classic car probably has one of these in the boot somewhere. I promise you, when you break down, and believe me, when, when you drive a classic car, especially in the beginning, coming from restoration, you will, at some point, you will, you will get stranded next to the road. And you will pray for the Salvation Army to come, come and save you. And that's then the job of this little fellow here. And it's also quite a, quite a comprehensive toolbox. So it has definitely saved me a couple of times. Nowadays, the car is sorted. So this toolbox has actually helped friends of mine that uh, I wouldn't mention the brands, but it was non, it was not Alphas uh, that uh, that this one actually had to come to the rescue. There at the back, you can see the the original jack, the little wheel spanner, still got its original carpets. I think the lighting is a bit a bit better now. Okay, guys, so that was basically a quick review of my GDV6. Um, we're probably going to go for. For a nice drive now the wife and myself you guys are more than welcome to come along and then you'll be able to to hear this uh, glorious v6 engine that the italians have built for us see you now
Hey guys, we're obviously back at the house. I tell you, it's always an experience to drive that GTV6 as you, I'm sure you saw in the clips. You know, it's difficult to drive that car slow. Well, you know, over the camera, it's a bit difficult to get the sensation of speed. But uh, in real life, it's just something else. The car keeps on, I guess it's because it's an, an, an Italian car, it just keeps inviting you to push it hard and faster and faster. Initially, it did take a little bit of time to get used to the car. She does have quite a long throw in terms of a gear lever because of the, you know, the trans axle, the gearbox uh, at the back. Um, you also need to get used to the brakes when they're cold. They're basically useless, and then uh, eventually, after warming up, uh, they do they do bite quite quite uh, quite good. Uh, in terms of the engine, I think you guys saw that I tend to never change gears below three and a half, four thousand revs. That's where she's quite quite happy. And then um, she also have she also has a lot of low down grunt. You can quite easily pull the way in second gear. Um, the car does feel in fifth gear that uh, she actually needs a, a sixth gear. But I mean, in those days, obviously the the, the sixth gear gearboxes weren't as popular. But that's it for, for this video. Thank you, thank you so much for, for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you have a better feel of what it is to own and to, and to drive uh, a JDB6. Remember, remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.